The Emperor and Empress of Japan host a gala luncheon in Tokyo. Queen Matilda the Belgians views an exhibition in Brussels. The Royal Family of Norway and Queen Margrethe of Denmark attend the famous Holmen Kollen Ski Festival. And Queen Mary of Denmark attends the Danish Warm Blood Stallion Competition and Equestrian Show in Herning. All this and much more coming up next on your Royal Daily News. everyone and happy Saturday. If you're new to my channel, my name is Alexandra and welcome to your Royal Daily News for March 9th, 2024. On Friday in Herning, Her Majesty Queen Mary of Denmark and Her Royal Highness Princess Benedicte of Denmark attended day three of the Danish Warm Blood Stallion Competition and Equestrian Show held at the Juska Bank Boxen. During the competition, the Queen and the Princess watched Her Serene Highness Princess Natalie of St. Wittgenstein Barlberg and her horse 50 Cent participate in the dressage class. Princess Natalie and 50 Cent came in third place. In Washington, D.C., His Royal Highness Prince Joachim of Denmark raised the Swedish flag at the Danish Embassy in celebration of Sweden becoming a member of NATO. Congratulations, Sweden. Yay. Speaking of Sweden, on Friday in Stockholm, Their Majesties King Carl Gustav and Queen Sylvia of Sweden presided over the presentation of scholarships from the Anders Walls Foundation held at the Grand Hotel. Also attending the ceremony were Princess Christina, Mrs. Magnusson, and her husband, Mr. Tord Magnusson. According to the Royal Court of Sweden, the Anders Walls Foundation, quote, annually awards scholarships to young people with the aim of supporting and encouraging entrepreneurship and creative thinking. The scholarships are awarded in the areas of entrepreneurship, natural science research, rural development, international studies, and music. End quote. This morning, Her Majesty Queen Sonia of Norway, Her Majesty Queen Margrethe of Denmark, the Royal Highnesses Crown Prince Haakon and Crown Princess Mathematic of Norway, Her Royal Highness Princess Ingrid Alexandra of Norway, His Highness Prince Sver Magnus of Norway, and Her Highness Princess Astrid, Mrs. Berner attended the famous Holmen Kolmen Ski Festival, FIS Nordic World Ski Championships. It's a tradition for members of the royal family to attend the famous ski festival. According to historian and TV2 Norway journalist, Mr. Ole Jürgen Hansen, quote, King Haakon VII, Queen Maud and Crown Prince Olaf were present at the show jumping in Holmen as early as 1906. The royal family, along with the mayor of Oslo, Ms. Anne Lindbo, and thousands of Norwegians and people from around the world, enjoyed several events, including the 50-kilometer women's joint start, combined 5-kilometer women and combined 10-kilometer men, and raw air. On Friday in Oslo, her Royal Highness, Crown Princess Mathemaith of Norway, attended a celebration on the occasion of International Women's Day held inside the Domus Biblioteca at the University of Oslo. According to the Royal Court of Norway, during the event, two Norwegian pioneering women in the health sector, Ms. Sigrun Mögedal and Ms. Gro Harlan Brundtland, were honored for their work. In a panel discussion, the need for more women in leading positions in the health sector was discussed. Quote, with the desire to increase national awareness of gender equality in global health management and pave the way for future generations. Women make up 70% of the world's health workers, while only 25% of their managers are women. The need for more female managers in this field was also discussed. End quote. In Brussels, Her Majesty Queen Mathilde of the Belgians arrived at the Palais de Beaux-Arts on Friday to view the exhibition entitled History of Not Laughing, Surrealism in Belgium. 
This exhibition is a part of a larger event that celebrates 100 years of surrealism and focuses on international contacts of the Belgian surrealists, the political historical context, and the most significant women artists of this avant-garde movement. Quote, the Palais de Beaux-Arts is celebrating 100 years of surrealism with an exhibition on Belgium's famous avant-garde movement spanning no less than 60 years. 1924 in Paris. Surrealist activities also started in Belgium with bold pamphlets by artists, including poet Paul Nuget, who guides this exhibition. Belgium's quirky surrealists go beyond the purely aesthetic. They want to transform the world with their subversive art. In History of Not Laughing, Surrealism in Belgium, we pay extra attention to their international interactions, political historical background, and important women artists." End quote. History of Not Laughing, Surrealism in Belgium will be open to the public until June 16th, 2024. In the afternoon, Their Majesties King Philippe and Queen Mathilde of the Belgians hosted a luncheon at Chateau de Lacun on the occasion of International Women's Day. In Luxembourg City, His Royal Highness Grand Duke Henri of Luxembourg attended the 100th anniversary celebration of the Chamber of Trades held at the European Convention Center, Luxembourg. On Thursday, Her Royal Highness, Hereditary Princess Sophie of Liechtenstein, attended a performance at the Operetta Balzers. On Friday, Their Imperial Majesties, Emperor Norihito and Empress Masako of Japan, hosted a gala luncheon at the Imperial Palace in honor of Their Royal Highnesses, Crown Prince Billa Ibni Hosono Bulkia, and Crown Princess Sarah of Brunei's official visit to Japan. This year, Japan and the Sultanate of Brunei are celebrating 40 years of diplomatic relations. Guests attending the gala luncheon included their Imperial Highnesses, Crown Prince Akishino and Crown Princess Kiko of Japan, members of the Imperial Court, members of the Crown Prince Couple of Brunei's Court, and distinguished guests. In Bangkok, Mr. Vikar Esorn, Vivachar Wongse, the second estranged son of His Majesty King Rama X of Thailand, returned to the Kingdom of Thailand on Wednesday. This is the third time in under a year that the 42-year-old has returned to his homeland after being banished for 27 years. After arriving at Bangkok International Airport, Vok, as he is known to his friends, took to social media and wrote, quote, Back home as promised, end quote. I'm sure his father's thrilled. Anyway, today, Vok once again took to social media to let everyone know what he had for breakfast. Quote, for the first time in my life, I had red ant eggs. It's really good, end quote. Vok also had something else that looked like eggs and macaroni. Anyway, you know, I really, really hope his dad will accept him again and place him in the line of succession. Vok would be an awesome king. The people of Thailand have welcomed the king's son with open arms, and he is seen by many as being the perfect choice as the next king of Thailand. If you would like to learn more about Vok and his interesting story, in the link above, right here on the top right, do you see it right there? And in the description box below, I will leave a direct link to my full report about Vok's first return to the kingdom of Thailand last August. I think his dad is threatened by him because he's really popular, the king's son. But he better hurry up and choose who's going to be his heir because he hasn't officially done it yet. And the guy's running out of time. He's no spring chicken. On Friday in London, His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, visited the Kia Oval Cricket Ground with the 2022 Earthshot Prize winner, Nopla, to learn about the new multi-million pound contract with Levy UK and Ireland, part of Compass Group, 
to introduce Nopla's seaweed-based natural food packaging to over 50 sporting and event venues. The Kia Oval is one of the venues where the seaweed-based food packaging materials will be used, joining other major sporting, entertainment, and event spaces, including the Principality Stadium in Cardiff and Wimbledon's All England Lawn Tennis Club, to name a few. Meanwhile, their royal highnesses, the Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh, attended the Community Sports and Recreation Awards at the Headingley Stadium in Headingley, Leeds. The Duke is president of the Sports and Recreation Alliance, a role he took over from his father, the late Duke of Edinburgh, in 2009. According to Buckingham Palace, during the visit, the Duke and Duchess met with the, quote, Leeds Rhinos female players and girls doing rugby league drills before joining the award ceremony, which recognizes those changing lives through grassroots sport, end quote. On Friday in Madrid, His Majesty King Felipe VI of Spain held an audience with the Commissioner General of the United Nations Agency for Palestine Refugees in the Near East, Mr. Felipe Lazzarini, a Palacio de la Zarzuela. On Friday in Bombier, His Serene Highness, Prince Albert II of Monaco, and Her Serene Highness, Princess Stephanie of Monaco, attended the event Pau Her on the occasion of International Women's Day 2024, held at the Espace Leo Thore. The event, which included workshops, games, information stands, and panel discussions, held under four themes, education, work, health, and sport, was organized by the Comité des Droits des Femmes de Monaco. And finally, on Wednesday, the Sovereign Prince gave a speech during the closing segment of the Blue Leaders high-level event on biodiversity beyond national jurisdiction in Brussels. According to a press release, the one-day event aimed to, quote, spur countries' ratification of the new treaty for the conservation and sustainable use of marine biological diversity of areas beyond national jurisdiction. The adoption of the Treaty for the Conservation and Sustainable Use of Marine Biological Diversity of Areas Beyond National Jurisdiction in June 2023 is widely viewed as a significant achievement for multilateralism. Representatives from governments, intergovernmental organizations, science and civil society came together for the Blue Leaders high-level event to celebrate this milestone and mobilize support for a swift entry into the force of the treaty. All speakers agreed on the aim to use the third UN Ocean Conference in June 2025 in Nice, France, as a platform to mark the entry into force of the BBNJ Treaty. For this, 60 countries will need to have ratified the agreement by February 2025. Thus far, Palau and Chile are the only two countries that have, thus far, ratified the agreement in the race to ratification. End quote. In a speech, the Sovereign Prince said that the Principality of Monaco aims to complete its ratification process by the end of 2024. And there you have it. Thank you all so much for joining me this afternoon. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. I will be back on Monday. March 11th, with all the latest royal news, including Crown Princess Victoria of Sweden's attendance at a flag-raising ceremony at the NATO headquarters in Brussels, the King and Queen of Denmark hosting a lavish gala dinner for the Danish Armed Forces in Copenhagen, the Prince of Wales' attendance at an event to celebrate the Earthshot Prize launch pad, and the King and Queen of Spain attending a commemoration ceremony in Madrid, and so much more. So I hope you all will join me on Monday. Until then, I sincerely wish each and every one of you a wonderful and relaxing weekend. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, comment below, and click on the notification bell so you won't miss a thing. Okay, again, have a wonderful weekend, everyone, and I will see you all on Monday. Take care.